links, YouTube. Probably want to go to Google Plus. Trains going by. How do I invite other people in here? Uh, Brian? Right. Oh. Um. I guess I had a bunch of hangouts that just broke before I guess they actually happened. They only on for a few seconds. Or, no, okay. Why is it shared privately? Hmm. Come back. With the glasses? Is that the right one? The glasses. <clears throat> so, I guess I was going to like. Ah, uh, it's gone back. I got to dance. Okay. Is it too much if <laughs> I'm in the screen behind me? <laughs> uh, 
Um, let me full screen the <laughs> that that a little bit too nerdy. Um, no one's here yet, but this is being recorded. So, what I was thinking of doing is uh, having a hangout every night. So I, I I speak to people. I speak to my friends. Like I, I speak to my friend Danielle, like pretty much every night of the week. Um, and what you know, watch TV shows, talk about the Daily Show, whatnot, whatever. Spoke to my friend Anna the other night. Um, it was her birthday, and all that jazz. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, and I feel like some of the conversations that I have should go to a broader audience. Uh, I mean, not that, you know, when I'm talking to my dad or whatnot, um, just about nerdy stuff, what kind of new cars, concepts, interest us, what crazy shenanigans are going on in Sydney and such, because you don't hear enough about Australia being in the States. And... I just figured, you know, I go through a bunch of things every week. I go, I see, I watch a lot of videos. Um, I I read a lot of articles. I do a lot of things, and um, I, some people might care about that. I don't know. I I I click a lot of things on Twitter. Twitter is my main source of just absorbing the internet, and. Uh, there's a lot of photos and such, but um, a lot of good articles that I watch and yeah, watch, read. Just someone to just stare at them. A lot of the time, I just keep them in a tab forever, so I have way too many tabs going in any which browser at any time. Um, but I figure we could discuss when when people when people join it. Now I was thinking of doing this this nightly or something. Just you know, sometimes I'll I'll do the hangouts that I do with Danielle. Um, I'll make them public and chat or watch the Daily Show or watch what's on right now. Jamay um, is hilarious. Uh, it's an Australian TV show created by Chris Lilly. He's this just hilarious comedian that plays a lot of different characters. And in this show, it's the third series that he's done with this character named Jamee, who is a high school girl, uh, 17 or 18 at this point. And uh, this series, she's in her senior year of high school, and um, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's, it's hilarious because of how realistic it is. Um, it's kind of done in that documentary style, like The Office, but it's, um, yeah, fictional. Oh, but it, though, Chris Lilly is just a uh, hilarious um, fellow. And it's uh, the fact that he can look like a 16, 17 year old girl is amazing. And th the first series he did was 2005 or something. And it's like eight years later or something. And he looks like the same girl. Mind blowing. Um, anywho, so uh, that's something I'm watching right now. Uh, it's it's currently airing in Australia, and you know you have means on the internet of, of consuming it. Um, so that's something that's something good. Uh, I'm currently reading a book called The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake. I think it's called. I think that's the name of it, and it's. It's awesome. It's a very pretty book. I don't have it with me. I'm at Vidler HQ, by the way. Uh, Vidler sign over there. That's, that's not the logo. It's, it's old. Um, oh, the big logo is gone. It would normally be up there. But um, this book is it's written in the... I, 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 I think I've got to read the first chapter again. I think the girl is in grade, 
I thought she was in grade eight or something, but I think she's in like grade three or four. Um, but so it's written from her perspective, but it's very well written for a girl of that age, even even thirteen or fourteen or twelve. I, you know, even that age. I mean, kids are. I don't know when this was written. I, I haven't even <laughs> checked the copyright or anything. Um, but it's. Uh, it's awesome. Um, the first chapter or two are about a cake, and I like cake a lot. And the just the the adjectives they use, the way she just describes cake and and her experiences with it and stuff, and and food in general. She starts getting into food, and then uh, having issues with food, and um, just it's it's very descriptive. And something else that's interesting is. There's no quotation marks, at least so far. I'm up to chapter seven. Um, there's no quotation marks used when the character is quoting somebody else. So, like, Mum said this, my brother said that, and you would think that that would be confusing because it's 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 written how we would verbalize it, so, um, you know, mum said, my lights, my lights, do I have to flash, flash them, flash my boobs, hello, do a little jig, holy crap, normally you just have to wave, they really make you do some exercise, don't they, oh, okay, there we go, um, <laughs> So, uh, book. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna. I, I'm terrible at telling, telling stories sometimes, but it's it's just written in a way where you would just you would have dialogue between two people, and you know you're not gonna most of the time do quotes when you're verbalizing it with someone. Uh, it kind of makes sense, and. For some magical reason, it makes sense, not even having quotation marks around the quotes. It, it can be a sentence that starts off the character telling something, a quote, right in the middle of the sentence, not like on the next line, and it doesn't say, said mum or anything. You just know that the mother says that because of the situation and what they're doing. Um, it's it's quite magnificent. I, I I am getting into reading more things. I haven't read a lot of novels um, since I was a young chap, really. Um, yeah, like back in the Goosebumps days and stuff. Um, I read essays online and nerdy things and articles and whatnot, but that isn't really like very in depth. Oh no, sorry. Well. Some people call audiobooks reading. I did read, if you want to call it reading, um, Seventh Son, Infection, Infected, Infested, whatever you want to call it, Scott Ziegler, um, and Earth Core, and I think, yeah, Ancestor as well. J.C. Hutchinson, Scott Sigler are awesome. Oh, and the rookie, the rookie? No, no. What's the other one? The football one. I think it might have been the rookie. That was interesting too. I don't know if I finished that. I don't think I finished that. But the concept was very interesting. So, um, yeah. So I'm reading this book. It's it's quite fantastic. <laughs> and. Uh, Seeing if I can invite some people to just hang out. Um, yeah, so that's something I'm reading day to day. So I'm. Yeah. Switch back out of this full screen for a second. Well, 
I don't know. I don't know how how regular or often this hangout end of the week. As I said, I was gonna maybe do them nightly. That is very unlikely. Um, I could do it right now. I don't think. I don't know if I would have enough to say for an hour. I'm estimating an hour because I can blab. And I'm sure if I bring one other person to this, we can blab about nothing, or just sit and watch a show. Um, but yeah, so now that we've already c- kind of gotten not really uh, like we've started, but an introduction with me, I don't know, I'm Derek, uh, and I recently moved to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which the lovely Vidler uh, is situated. Uh, and it's I've come here a lot for the past several years, and it's an awesome little town. It's it's incredibly small, but I it doesn't feel small. Maybe because of my situation, which is I ride my bike to work every day. Do you want to see my bike? Hold on. Let me get my bike. Should I get my bike? I'll just bring you to my bike. Come with me here. This is my glorious bike. Yeah. Yeah, the helmet, yeah, it matches. Closely matches. Um, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. And uh, so I ride that baby to work every day. And so I used to work remotely for the past four and a half years-ish, uh, worked remotely at Vidler, and it, it's awesome. I lived in Texas. I, I worked from Australia. I think the company has changed a lot. I have changed a lot, um, but... Uh, let's back in here. Uh, and... Yeah, but we've... Um, so not that much is too different, but in terms of the town, I've I've lived in Sydney. I've lived in in a little town in Houston, near Houston, an hour north of Houston, called Huntsville, S H S U, what what, um, and Buffalo. And when I lived in Buffalo, I lived in I don't know what you might call the suburbs or something, and. I never really went to downtown Buffalo or anything like that very often. Early on, I went to uh, a lacrosse game, I think a hockey game, ice hockey, I think. And I don't do, I don't think I've ever done football. I do I've done baseball, done the Mets and the Rangers and whatever. But um, yeah, and so. Buffalo, I don't know, but Buffalo felt felt small just because I didn't get out much. I would ride around. I would ride, you know, I'd ride 20 miles here and there, ride down to the lake and the whatnot and stuff. Um, but it didn't feel like a big giant city or anything, like I mean, like New York City does, or even or like Sydney, I guess. Uh, I guess it's not, I guess Buffalo isn't, but it's a city, it's a fairly big city, and Bethlehem is incredibly small, it's pretty much just one, it's like Three blocks, maybe, of Main Street. Main Street consists of Main Street is long, but it's like three blocks. And then I don't know. There's north and the south side of Bethlehem. A little geography here. Uh, and then there's on the south side. I live in the north side. And uh, on the south side, there's, there's Fourth Street and Third Street. They have a bunch of things. Uh, there might be like five blocks of stuff, but it's very scattered. And that's really, I mean, there's stuff all around everywhere and stuff. There's there's the Steel Stacks, the giant casino that people come all the way from New York City to go to because it's cool. There's a mall that's attached to it. Um, 
But other than that, it's it's pretty much it. Oh, there's a place called Vegan Tree. I mean, but but it has a lot of unique things too, like Fiddler. Uh, but there's also a place called Vegan Treats, which is deliciously amazing. I, I it's people they have their stuff in stores in other cities and more close by, probably like Philly and New York City, I guess. Um, and they take their stuff. I went I went to Boston in October 2012, and we went stumbled upon a veg fest or some like vegetarian vegan festival conferency kind of thing, and and it was awesome. And vegan treats was there, and and then we went and watched some lady talk about becoming vegetarian and how it's I think vegetarian how it's done so well for her and. Um, I guess that sort of influenced my, me going vegetarian at the start of 2013 as well. Um, and like peeps are made here, you know those marshmallow things, uh, I don't really like them, but um, there's, a, there's a peeps factory and there's a peeps store at the casino mall thing. I haven't been there yet, I've got to do that. I live like a few doors away from the Okuk Cupcake shop, which is apparently some of the best cupcakes in town or in the area state. I don't know. Uh, they've had a lot of um, cool things, and then there's a thing called Music Fest here every year, which is uh, a, the biggest music festival in the world. But you know, there's an asterisk with that, meaning like it's a ten-day thing. So that's how so many people can attend because it's ten days and there's a lot of time. Yeah, you know, like millions of people. Uh, maybe it's up to a million. I don't. I don't know the numbers. I don't know enough about it. But I went to music fest, and it's it's not just music, but they have like festival stuff, like people selling tomato sauce and um, spices and art and photographs and stuff. So so Bethlehem's cool and awesome, and it's it's close to New York City, and I will, I go to New York City. Often, I haven't really been since I moved here, but it's close enough. Now, I'm thinking of going to Wine Library in New Jersey um, on the 29th of November. That's the day after Thanksgiving. That's Black Friday. Gary's having some event, like a book book signing, reading, um, and I guess wine event uh, there. I've never been, I've been to Wine Library once before when uh, I guess I got, I, we had to get off the freeway, I think coming back from Bethlehem. We're going, we're driving to New York City, me and my friend Leah, my BFF, and we, um, we had to get petrol, and uh, they do the whole service thing and then we got a little turned around and uh, I had to turn around in a parking lot and that was the wine library parking lot. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, okay. And it was closed because it was the middle of the night or something. But uh, That was funny. That's, so I want to try and get there but I think I probably have to get into Manhattan and then go back into New Jersey because, well, it's easy to get to New York City or Philly from Bethlehem. Anywhere else is pretty much a nope. And actually, I could probably get to Newark Airport, and that might be easier. Um, but yeah, like trying to get to trying to get to Rochester or Pittsburgh or. Buffalo, even or Fredonia, um, you have to pretty much like I looked up greyhounds and stuff because sometimes greyhounds will go from some weird spot to some weird spot, but maybe they don't anymore. I, I, Amtrak, you know, you're limited to the trains. There's a train that goes right through here, but it's only freight trains. It's so sad. Um, and with a greyhound or any other buses I could find, you have to go to Philly first and then to wherever you want to go, or sometimes it was to Philly, to New York City, to wherever you want to go. Like, what? I don't, why? Especially Pittsburgh, why is there no direct thing to Pittsburgh? I know it's 
far-ish. It's like across the other side of Pennsylvania. But, oh my gosh. They need to uh, need to get some Hyperloop action going if they're going to make that kind of roundabout stuff. Yeah. Anywho, um, so I was thinking on a wine library. If anyone's going, do let me know. I mean, if you're watching this recording after the fact, then um, tweet me or however you want to contact me. Google, Google Plusy. Uh, leave a comment on this thing. The tubes. Um, so I had a bunch of things that I was going to talk about just in case we didn't have enough to fly about. Uh, so I guess if we want to just keep on similar topics without getting too much in too many tangents going here. Uh, so Gary had a spree cast, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I mean, I was trying to think of other Garys that I know the other day. Because when, whenever we talk, we talk about Gary here in the office, it's like Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I, my, I did have a manager at, or the owner of the candy store I worked at in Australia. My hair is ridiculously amazing. Um, <laughs> was named Gary, the, the owner of this candy company. Susan and Gary. Oh, well, should I just throw something in the air? See my belly button probably. Um, so I had the spray casting. It was his birthday yesterday, the 14th, and uh, I, I wanted to try and watch this thing live, but I I think I slept until the moment it started, and then I had to go right to work. Um, so I watched the recording. It's like an hour long, but really, you say like, it's funny. I would rather watch. I, I maybe not rather, but I typically end up watching much longer formed content than some of the content I would want to watch, which is much shorter. Um, for example, I watched this spreecast. I watched the whole thing like in pieces, uh, you know, while I was making dinner and whatnot. And uh, my pal Clintus is always tweeting out videos that he's doing with his family and stuff, and I kind of want to keep up with that. And Michelle Glavin, and, and I mean, Justine has made probably like 50,000 videos since the last one I watched of hers. And uh, I want to keep up with this stuff, but the, some of this, I know I did daily videos for like a year, and it was awesome, and I really love that archive of content. Um, but man, like, I, I haven't figured out a moment in my day, I guess this would be the moment, um, when I would, when I would watch that stuff. Uh, like some, I guess maybe people watch it, sit at home on the weekend and watch it. I don't know. I go out bike riding on the weekend. Uh, the last couple of weekends here have been awesome, just biking all over the, the town here. Um, because there's, there's trails and canals that go apparently all the way up to the Poconos Mountains. And I, I don't, I don't know how tall they are. I should look them up. I don't know how far they are, first of all. And if they're under like 100Ks, 200Ks, let's just ride there. They're skiing on a bike. Um, I don't know. Apparently people ski there. I've... Sometimes I hate sounding like a snob, but not a... I don't know. A snob or a jerk. But like the... Um, I, I've been to Whistler. Snow in Australia is fairly crap. Um, so I, I don't know what those. I feel like the even the mountains in Australia are probably taller than the mountains here, the Poconos. I don't know. I that's just the feeling I get because I went up. There's a there's a mountain top campus, Lehigh Valley, Lehigh University, whatever you call it, um, thing up here, and you can see all like Lehigh Valley and Bethlehem and whatnot. Uh, and I could see some mountains in distance, but it didn't look too impressive. I also went to Palm Springs earlier in the year, and they're like, I can't even remember, 3,000 meters tall. It's, it's amazing. Um, maybe maybe 8,000. I can never I'm trying to remember. I was comparing them to Australia's mountains, and they were still taller than the Blue Mountains. And um, but I don't think, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's a desert in Palm Springs, so you can't. Uh, there was a bit of snow when I went there in April, the tippy top, just a little patches of it. 
Anyway, I've gone way off topic, and I actually was talking about something. Gary's Spreecast. So uh, he had a birth. He did a birthday thing, and it was just. It, it's fun to watch, like his energy and and his team and stuff. Like they were they were really pimping, trying to sell books and such. But you know, <clears throat> doing the doing the cool thing. Co- co- getting people on camera. So Spreecast is kind of almost like a Google Hangout, but crappy quality, um, which is a downside. And a cool thing was, even with the recording, you could see, it was almost like JTV. I don't know if JTV does that. Um, ever did that or does that now, where the comments stay with that moment in the video. So as the video plays, you see those comments coming through as they were, uh, as he was recording it live. So you can like, it's like you were there live. Whereas a lot of things, um, like maybe this recording, like if there were people commenting below it, it wouldn't, they wouldn't appear live next to it. They would just be there beneath the video, and uh, you don't really get that context unless someone puts in, um, hey, it's zero zero oh three. Uh, I guess in a way it's almost like um, time tagging on Fiddler because uh, that follows along with the video, but it, it, it's just cool because this was live. These comments were coming in as... It was cool. It was cool to watch, and uh, yeah, I don't know, Gary's doing cool things, so on his new book and such. I think I have to probably get a copy when I go to my library. Um, and then another thing, uh, I don't know, everyone sees Gary's stuff, I'm sure, but I had, uh, do, 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 do. I'll link, I'll, what, I'll make show notes, what is this going to be, a podcast? I don't know what I'm doing right now, um, but Google Plus just makes this easy, because you just broadcast it live and it's recorded on YouTube. I'll probably put it over on Fiddler too. Um, he did, 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 did. he did an interview with these guys, Predictive ROI Live. I don't know what Predictive ROI Live is, but it was a pretty good interview. Every keynote and interview and stuff of Gary's, you know, after a while, you know, they got to, they get the same. But that's because he's he's doing roughly the same, saying roughly the same thing to get his point across, and also because of different audiences sometimes. So these this. This is, um, I don't know, people that do ROI, something I should probably care more about, but it's like SEO, it's like, I don't care, at least for myself. Um, but it was a good interview. It was only like 20 minutes or something, 25 minutes, and it was it was a good, well, um, well done interview, like the video quality and the direction and the questions and everything was good. Um, so that was, that was interesting to watch. I just watched that a little while ago. Uh, he is saying a lot of um, uh, great things. Uh, that and some of these things that like I do here at Vidla, and uh, I don't know. But we have like trade secrets about how we market and stuff. Um, I don't know, but yeah, I have I have a lot of fun doing what I do at Vidla, and uh, Gary touches on some of those things about what people should be doing in their businesses and stuff because there are yeah a lot of people that are just not putting in the work or is not doing it right, just not understanding how to be human, uh, which is which just means other people win. So, anyway, I guess enough about Gary. Um, But uh, I do like to save the planet, and I do like to exercise with those, so this works out well. (laughs) Um, So, let me see. Um, Oh, the other cool thing, business-related stuff, uh, marketing and entrepreneurship, Entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship? Or entrepreneurialship? How many ships can a ship ship chuck if a ship chucks wood? Uh, 
So my pal Neil uh, in in Canada, he he works at the Queen's School of Business. Not really sure what they do there, but it's like a university, and or it is a university, and uh, he is he is awesome. He's been doing podcasts since forever. I you know back in the Adam Curry Daily Source Code days and such, and he um. He's just started this new podcast called QSB Insight, and it's basically just uh, going to be interviews with insightful people and entrepreneurs and marketers and things like that. So the first episode was with Avanash. You could probably fill in the name. I don't remember the last name because it's uh, Avanash. Cup. Koshik? Kaushik? 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 Anyway, uh, it's, it's a, a name um, which is not... I don't know. It's, it's an unusual name, so I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, and he, he is a digital marketing evangelist. That's the word. Uh, and, and an entrepreneur and an author and a public speaker and writer, about, but he's the digital evangelist for Google, uh, digital marketing evangelist. And he, um, so Neil had an, did an interview with him. I never really heard of the guy before. I'm sure he's come up in, through retweets and stuff. But uh, he was talking about the, the digital media and social media landscape and um, how some of the people are doing how some of the people are being just horrible at how they're running businesses like it's 2009 and like, oh, you just got a mobile website? Oh, that's great. Um, welcome to five years ago. And uh, he was vi very passionate and very entertaining because of the amount of energy that just was conveyed through audio. Uh, this, is a, this is an audio podcast. Uh, it may do video at some point. Maybe Neil, huh? Um, but yeah, it's it, that was great, great first episode, and then the second episode was uh, Paul Butnitz from the guy. He's the guy that created Kid Robot and Butnitz Bicycles, and there was one other thing that I don't remember. Oh, um, Mini Disco or something. It was like a Mini Disc website back before the iPod, and. If you don't know what Kid Robot is, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and Buttons Bicycles, I was just drooling over these bikes. Uh, I'd seen them before, but I just I didn't realize that some of them might be in my price range. Uh, they're like they're high-end bikes that are meant to last a lifetime. They're made out of titanium. They're not going to rust. They're just high-end components and everything, and everything's meant built to last. My bike is beautiful. You saw my bike. It's a beautiful, amazing piece of machinery, uh, but it, um, you know, it has a greasy chain. I have to, I have to roll up my, uh, my pants to get my, I guess I, I can't even see myself on the screen. I was going to look back and see what I was saying, but then I could have looked at my computer. Anyway, um, yeah, to reveal my beautiful leggings beneath it. Do you like these hex code legging things? They're pretty good. Um, so anyway, if, you know, you have to roll up your pants to to watch out for the grease, right? I don't care, whatever. That's cool, but it would be nice to have a, a non-greasy chain, with, or you know, what do they use these? A, a belt on these um, buttons, bicycles. It's, it's awesome. Uh, but hearing the story of um, how Paul uh, kind of got started and just how he did things that people didn't believe in and they became quite successful and at least successful enough in his mind. Um, and it's cool. It's cool to listen to these things. It's cool to, to hear other people's experiences and while sure you should probably be out doing your thing, you know, you can learn from other people and maybe if they made mistakes, maybe you can try and not make those mistakes as well. Um, if you make mistakes you make yourself, you definitely learn from much more. Uh, 
But yeah, the great podcast. Um, they usually about an hour, forty-five minutes, something like that. It's good, good podcast to listen to. Um, he's got who's he got lined up? He's got Gary lined up for an interview. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to to say. He, he tells me some some deep secrets. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll give you Gary. I'll let the other ones be surprises. Um, so that was that's that's kind of like the businessy things I've been looking at this week, this week. Uh, today, Friday. Uh, what did um, where is she from? Oh, okay, yeah. From, I was hoping Rebecca would join this because she was from San Francisco. Well, from San Francisco, she lives in Chicago now, I guess, according to her Twitter profile. Um, and I, I kind of thought she was from San Francisco because then she may have seen the SF Bat Kid thing today, which was uh, a kid who I'm going to totally destroy this story. Um, a kid who was, I think, I should look this up. Um, I, I, I think it was leukemia he was battling. I think he killed it. I guess I'm going to knock on wood. I don't really believe in all of that. But uh, I think he, he crushed it and he... Anyway, um, kid was suffering from something. He's awesome. And he had uh, made the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He made a wish. And his wish was to be Batman. Or he really enjoyed Batman. So they just basically turned San Francisco into Gotham City today. Uh, they got him dressed up as Batman, Bat-Kid, and they're using the hashtag SFBatKid, which I was following along throughout the day. Uh, there was some live feeds and stuff, and uh, it was just more... I saw this about a week ago that this was happening. I didn't realize what date it was happening, and... Uh, it would have been really cool to be there, but I didn't. I also didn't. I mean, I guess it's been uh, worked on for a while now, uh, marketed, and, and you know, like I was saying earlier in this broadcast, uh, even outside of the city that you're in, sometimes you don't hear things. I'm sure people in San Francisco were hearing more about more about it and and all of that. You know, we're only on the other side of the country, and we. You know, I briefly heard about it last week, and I'm on the internet all the time. So, um, anyway, so they 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 got the, like what the seven thousand people turned out to, as fans, and then they also had this whole setup with the Riddler and the Penguin, and they had Lamborghinis as Batmobiles, and they had a a big Batman as his sidekick, like a uh, an adult Batman as Batkid's sidekick. Um, so many camera crews, and I, and and so many people just lined up. Even heading down to like he went into a vault to try and get the Riddler, and there was just these camera camera cute camera crews in the vault as well. And I I get that I I you know get the shot and and then document it. But I'm fairly sure either Make a Wish or someone is doing a documentary on this. And I don't know how many cameras they need, but there were there there must have been like four or five cameras in that that little vault, and and then other people just hanging around, and then plus the camera that I'm watching it from, like there was a, a recording of some of this vault action and stuff, and um, it was uh, it seemed there was just so many people lined up and around, and, and like and that felt to me like. Like, this is all set up, which I know it is. And I'm sure the kid knows it. He's like five or six or seven. Can't tell age. Um, but I'm, I'm sure he knows it is. But I also think that he probably ignores the majority of the people surrounding him, except maybe in the streets where there's just thousands of people just yelling and screaming and um, cheering. And I guess, you know, people, when he's focused on getting the Riddler and stuff, he's probably not too worried about the cameras that are around him and 
you know, a few other people following him around. Uh, but he was also posing for the cameras too. So, but that was cool. That that's that's something cool today that happened in San Francisco. A lot of people talking about it. A lot of people that live in San Francisco have been talking about it. I suppose. Um, I retweeted a few things, and yeah, there's if you search the hashtag #SFBatKid. Now, Twitter search is is limited. It what it goes back a day or something or a week at the most. Um, so you know if you're watching this in months or years, you probably have to like look in the description of this video to see links to specific things that actually have. I I I've, I curated a couple of links I suppose because there's a lot. I went on YouTube search as a back here. There's a lot of crap. People just holding their holding their phones up, and it's like doing the um the auto stabilization thing so that crops the video even more and you just have no idea what you're looking at. Um, and so I found some decent videos and you can watch who knows if in 35 years if those videos are going to be there but for now, for now. I'm sure more people watch this now than in 35 years. That would be hilarious if like I'm on a movie screen in 35 years for some reason. Um, anywho, so yeah, as a fat kid, Give that a go. Um, cool. I I should I started searching for what it, what it was all about, but uh, I should I should probably tell you just to. Let's see. Right now, it's all just recent articles about what happened today, not his story. Uh. Oh, BuzzFeed. Business Insider. That's a sweet shot. Batman, Batkid, and the Lamborghini. Uh, Five-year-old Miles, who is battling leukemia. I guess he's still battling it now. I'm. You know, you always got to do double, triple research with all this stuff. Who knows how much research these guys did? But that's the uh, the quick nit nitty gritty part. Oh, this is pretty cool. This goes through a lot of the story. The damsel in distress. He goes and saves her. Then I guess getting the Riddler. Having lunch. Penguin. Yeah, this, this is a good... Business Insider seems to be rather thorough at this point. And the kid got the key to the city. Now, what do the keys to the city do? If what, when he's twenty, he can like have a party in the, um, whatever this is, the Congress House, the Cap Capitol Hill. Like, what do they have? in... is the key to the city like the Nobel Peace Prize? Like, it just means you've done something awesome. So. You're respected. I think the kid is awesome. I'm just just wondering, just or random rhetorical ish question. So, uh, yes, battling leukemia. I bet he will crush it because he is bad kid. So uh, yeah, let me let me save that business insider link so that can be part of the episode or whatever this is as well. Uh, okay, a couple things before I wrap this baby up. It's almost 11 p.m. Uh, Keezy, let's go with Keezy. That's a, uh, uh, an app which I have on my phone. Maybe we can do a bit of a demo here. Huh? Pascal, my buddy Pascal works, I guess, did a bunch of work for this app. And uh, so it, it's pretty pretty and it's clean. It's nice. Uh, I think I've already got some recorded sounds on here. So like you just 
going to tap B. Quack, quack, quack. So you can, you can essentially um, make multiple. Quack, 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 Ding, ding, ding. Screaming. I just did this the other day. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I have never music talent though. Ding, ding. But it, it's kind of fun. Quack, quack, ding. quack. Quack, 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 uh, fun app. Um, apparently, they got more cool things coming for it, but it's um, just basically like a little music kind of app. You make some cool sounds and impress your friends, I suppose. Uh, uh, oh, and, and another there's an app, but another thing I've been doing is learning Spanish. Uh, I lived in Spain as a chap and for a couple of years, and uh, I spoke Spanish fluently. But I was a young chap, moved back to Australia, and lost it all. <sighs> That's a yawn, you're welcome. Uh, I, in primary school, I learned a bit of Italian, and then in high school, I did Japanese. So... Not that that makes you lose it. I'm pretty sure I lost it before I did any of that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get back into Spanish. So there's a site called Duolingo, Duolingo.com, and it's it it sort of sort of gamifies learning a language, um, but it's pretty serious about it too. So you you kind of get points. Or there's levels. Uh, there's lingots, which are like larger points. You can have streaks, like I have a seven-day streak, and I, that means I practice every day. Now, and, and the app will remind you, hey, you haven't practiced in a couple of days. Uh, you know, practice, you know, makes it stick. That is very true because there's, you know, there'll be a week where I wouldn't do it for a bit, and uh, I just forget a lot of things. But now I think I've got a nine or ten day streak right now, and I'm crushing it. Um, me and Danielle will will do it together on a, I mean, on a hangout or something, and sometimes I'll just do it on my phone on the app, um, and it's it's really good. Uh, I think she, Danielle's learning spa, French as well, and you can do I think you can do Portuguese, maybe Korean. I wish you could do Japanese. I would probably get into some of that. Um, it's free right now, this site, so there's no reason not to do it. If you don't know another language, um, it may not affect your life that much, but if knowing another language will probably improve your life a lot. And that goes for c programming and coding as well. I want to learn another coding language. I don't really know what to right now. I have a, I got a Treehouse account. I think it's just treehouse.com maybe. It's kind of like Code School and those sites where they just they it's training for how to code. I know HTML, CSS, a little tad of JavaScript and PHP. A tad it means like I guess a lot of things. Uh, I probably guess a bit of CSS too, like especially CSS3. Um, because I kind of learned HTML in GeoCities these days, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know what it would be. I should I guess I should probably just do some quick double checking of HTML CSS, and then maybe is JavaScript or jQuery helpful? I don't know. I don't know what I would want to build or or fix. I mean, I have so many ideas of. 
I have so many ideas for things I want to make in the world, but I don't know what was really required, required to do that. So, I think I think probably web programming for now. Maybe um, maybe iOS app development. I don't know if if Android is much different. I don't know how that. What is that? Maybe running in Java. I don't want to say Java because that people don't like Java. Um, I don't know what. I don't know what Android apps are coded in. Python. Or, no, I don't know, but I'm just trying to think of what language would be best. I'm doing Spanish because I, I, I live there, and there's a lot of Spaniards in America, and I want to go back to Spain. Uh, And it's, I don't know, the second most popular language or, or like, the one behind English. Like, if maybe Chinese is the top. Or, well, I don't know whether it's Chinese, Mandarin, and Cantonese and stuff. But, uh, yeah. So, if you want to learn a language, like, you know, everyone just says, go get started. You know, you can... I don't know if you want to use Rosetta Stone or there's I've seen other things that are much cheaper than Rosetta Stone on Amazon and stuff. You can buy things for like thirty dollars or whatever. But Duolingo seems to be pretty good. Um, I'm sure it's not perfect with some of the conjunctions and sentences and phrases and whatnot. Because some there's actually I think there's a Twitter account called like Duolingo Phrases or something and sometimes you get some of the wackiest things like Sometimes they'll, they'll do things that are just like the, the the elephant wears a shirt or something silly when it gives you multiple choice options, which is which is rare. Normally you have to type or say things or type it in Spanish. Um, but sometimes an actual real thing you have to translate is ridiculous. And uh, I think I've screenshotted a few of them, but there's a, there's a Twitter account. I'm sure if you just search Duolingo on Twitter, it'll come up with one of the top ones. It's pretty funny, some of the, the things that they they make you translate. It's like, when am I ever going to say that an elephant drinks milk or an elephant eats rice? Like, maybe they do. I don't know an elephant's diet, but that just seems strange. Or like, yeah, the new ones. But cool, Duolingo is fun, and you know because it gamifies it. It's like, oh, I have to get more points than you, or whatever, or more streaks, or whatnot. So uh, I guess the last thing I have, um, well, and a couple of, other, right, just before I was started this recording, I um, I saw an, uh, an article for. The LG, LG, LG G Flex. Yeah, it's a smartphone. It's curved. It's got a curved body and a curved screen. It's kind of curved like the screw. The screen is on. This is the screen. This is the back. And you can sit it down, screen facing down on the table or on whatever. And, and like sit on it, put 35 kilos on it. They did a bunch of scientific tests, like with weights and stuff. But then they also get someone to sit, put their butt on it, and uh, so it, it actually flattens out. Like it's a curved device, but then it flattens, as, you know. And then, um, but then it goes back to its original shape, and that's that's kind of cool. I'll get to that more in a second because the back, um, the back they say is. Uh, it heals itself from scratches, and you kind of wonder what that means. I'm not sure what kind of. It seems like a proprietary coating or something they put on it right now. But they got a a, a brass brush or something, some like a harsh metal brush. And they just brush the back of it, 
several times, and you can see they, they brushed the LG G Flex and another phone, probably the iPhone or something, and uh, you can tell there's getting some scratches on both of them. The scratches on the, the other device was, um, they weren't as uniform or as, um, yeah, they, were, they were just weren't as uniform. They were kind of all scratchy all over the place. Um, and but yeah, after like a, after like you know thirty seconds to two minutes, the um, the flex like the scratches disappear. I don't, I don't know how. I don't know if if you scratch that same spot. And these are light scratches. They're not like a deep scratch like a key might do or something, um, or a dent. But I don't know what would happen if you scratch lightly scratch that same spot fifty times. Or it just is it continuously healing? Is there like bacteria growing on the back of this device. Um, that was interesting. And so the, the curve the curved part of the phone flexing to, to flatten out if you sit on it or something. Both of these things I'm like, great. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, what do you say? To still scoop it? Still scoop it? Excuse me? Pardon, I think. Pardon. Uh, I was like, okay, great. That's that's amazing. It's it's in like another gimmicky thing that an Android phone does. That you'll show your friends. Oh, look, I can sit on my phone and it flattens out. You can't. It's not quite bendable. I mean, I'm sure if you just really tried to bend it with your hands, you probably could. Um, but it's not like a flexible device yet. Those will come. Um, and I, so I'm thinking, okay, great. So the it flattens out, and then I guess, I guess at this point that is kind of impressive because I don't know, I don't know if it's a removable bat, a removable battery or not. But they've had to figure out a way for the battery in there. I'm guessing it doesn't flex itself. I'm guessing it's positioned in a way that things can flex around it. Um, and I'm guessing that the chip or the motherboard or whatever probably um, has little bits between it to flex. They didn't go into detail about how it actually works inside because that's until someone tears it down. It was released a couple of weeks ago or something, but until someone tears it down, they probably won't know how that's done. If it, if at all, maybe just you know motherboards and stuff. They have a you know they made a Plastic, which can bend up to a point. Uh, well, I guess it can bend depending which way you want, depending on how thick it is and what kind of plastic. Um, but yeah, so I get it is sort of a little bit impressive. Uh, but anyway, I'll link to an article about that. Uh, the other thing that happened this week is like, oh, Snapchat turned down. And this isn't this. I'm not doing a news show. I'm just these are just things that have been on my mind or things that I've seen, and I don't care about this really at all. But Snapchat, three billion dollar. Uh, I guess you would call it a valuation or an evaluation uh, or a value. But uh, Facebook wanted to buy them for three billion. What did what did uh what did YouTube go for? One point five, one one billion or something. Uh, so that's interesting. I don't use Snapchat that much, and I discovered the other day. So I've been saving Snapchats for ages. Um, I, I got a Snapchat back in July or August, um, pretty much because Gary Vaynerchuk said several things about it, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll try it. And I mean, it. it it is something I should probably know more about, um, but oh, okay. But I don't like destructive content, and I like I like things to be around. I like historical. I like yeah, you know, like uh, documenting, and keeping a historical record of everything. Really, I like keeping my browser history as long as I can. Um, Sometimes in a year, I may go, hey, what was that article that I was talking about, about the LG Flex thing? 
and I may go back to my browser history, I may go back to this episode, I may go to my Google web browsing history or Google search history, because I think I had a search. No, that wasn't a web that wasn't a web search. No, it wasn't. It was a link on Facebook. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so but I t this is this is lame. So you get Snapchats, blah blah blah. You get the you get the list of them and stuff and let me let's see here. So like down here there's all these ones that are empty, and that means you've read it or whatever, and then these ones are new. Um, I haven't read or looked at or whatever any of these. Like, yeah, like there's there's a whole bunch, whatever, that I've been saving. I was going to look at them all at once. So another reason why I was saving them is I can't figure out how to screenshot. Like, call me an old geezer or something. But uh, I think I managed to get one screenshot one time. But they do. I guess they do this, like, screenshot protection... You can't screenshot things, but I don't think they. I don't think Iris really let them do that. So there's a way to do it. You know, like hold it with five fingers or something. I, so I wanted to screenshot them if they were going to be good. But so apparently there's all this content which has been destroyed because I didn't look at it soon enough. So there's some here from August 30. Let's okay. If I can't screenshot, I'm going to freaking do a video of it. So. What do we got here? We got Leah here. I did, guys, kids. This could be boobs. So let's maybe turn away right now. What what is this? Do I have to keep holding it? Okay, yeah, keep holding it. Oh, I have five seconds left. Oh, food, mm, food, some chips. I, I couldn't even see what the figure was because my freaking fingers in the way. Uh, uh, some kind of food. Uh, maybe I have to watch that back. Food, fries, burgers, something, bread. Great. Um, uh, let's just do the rest of these now, okay? Again, as I said before, I don't, I don't like Snapchat yet. Look at me, I'm using it. What the frick? Uh, let, me, let me put my finger right on the edge of the screen so that it. There we go, expose a little bit. And. Oh, a pop pop. That's cute. Oh, five seconds. I guess she only gives me 10 seconds. Is 10 the max, I think? Maybe. So that was a dog. Well, I don't know what purple means. Does that mean it's a story? Because they do the story thing where it keeps it for up to... I don't know if it keeps it for 24 hours or the story goes... Oh, I guess there's a Team Snapchat one. I wonder what that's going to be. Is that going to be boobs? What the frick? Wait, it's a video? It said, what did it say? Over and over? Turtles? What the hell? Why are turtles fighting? That's not right. What the frick? Is there going to be sound of this? Can Team Snapchat? Team Snapchat can do this. Oh, it's an ad. Oh. Well, that's great. So it's Team Snapchat. I thought it would just be them being like, hey, what's up? But apparently they do. I never even saw their first one on August 1st, whenever I joined. Anyway, I'll do the rest of Leah's. I guess purple ones are, what is this? Another pop? Totally in love. Great. Um, I don't know what the purple one's going to... Oh, maybe purple is video. I don't know. So, you have to... Please. We in the port in Florida. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm on a boat, motherfucker. Okay, so purple means video, I guess. Team Snapchat is blue, because I guess they can... Double tap to listen. Oh, so you double tap that Team Snapchat one, and it goes to the... Song on iTunes. So that was Small Pools EP? Band called Small Pools? I don't know, maybe I'll check them out on Spotify. I'm not going to pay for it, yo. So I've seen all my Snapchats, now what? Do I have to show my boobs? I'm going to do that because my shirt is untucked. And why the frick not?
Jeremy Dwight. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Uh yeah, no one else is at the office. By the way. Because I work late. Um <clears throat> Wait, what do I have to do like <laughs> Look at this picture. Isn't that beautiful? Why the freak am I doing this? Stupid. Yes, ten seconds so people can screenshot it. What is this star thing? Add to your story. <sighs> Adding a snap to your story allows your friends to view your snap for an unlimited number of times for 24 hours. You can change who can view your story in the settings. Would you like to add this snap to your story? Add and don't show again. Just add. Oh. Okay. But. But. No, I don't have any best friends. Apparently there's no best friends. How do I enter edit? Sorry, I shouldn't be going through like all these settings and stuff. Well, I... Thea has a score of 44,000? What does that even mean? Double... What the... What the... Brick! How do you freaking do this? This is horrible. I can't figure out how to look at Thayer's bloody story from today, from five hours ago. Freaking press and hold to view. Press and hold to view. Did I view it already? Did I? But it, it, you can view it unlimited amount of times. What the hell? Well, can people see my? Bo I have a score of sixteen. Yay! Can people see my boobs? That's all I want to know. Oh, so I can look at it. How do I send it to other people? Frick! This is dumb. How do I even, how do I get Thea to be like a, a best friend or something? Like, how do I? Thea has a, edit name delete, oh, so can I? Edit name, delete, block. How do I make a best friend? Maybe you have to like look at their stuff all the time or something? Oh, Team Snapchat has no best friends. What the f... Oh! Oh! Stop! That's enough, Snapchat. Oh my gosh, what did I just spend like 10 minutes on that? That's crap. Um, last thing, I should probably put this as the first thing because no one's going to watch until this point, but I'll tag it on Vidla so you can look at the tags and be like, this is an important part of the video. Ugh, I should probably go and eat dinner. Um, I'm going to be going to probably Vancouver, Portland, and Seattle at the end of December, Christmas time, beginning of January kind of stuff. I have friends in Seattle, I have family in Vancouver, I don't think I know anyone in Portland. I probably know some people on Twitter. Tell me what to do there, tell me where to go, what, what if you live, if you've been to one of those places, awesome, if you live there, say howdy, uh, I want to give you a high five and a hug. That's, that's, a, that's about it. I thought I'd been longer on that, but yeah. End of December to the beginning of January. Probably going to go skiing in the Vancouver's. Maybe if there's somewhere near Seattle too. 
Um, yeah, looking to have a sweet time. I, I have family, I have friends. I get, I'm going to have some time, but I just, you know, if you want to meet up or something, have a pint. No, I don't drink. Um, have a piece of cake. Uh, that would be fun. And I'll probably be even more rugged up than I am now because it's going to be probably freezing there. Uh, I don't know. Is it snowing? It snows everywhere. It snows in bloody Texas. I drove for seven hours once in Texas for in the snow on the freeway because they didn't salt the roads because they don't salt the roads because it's Texas. So that's my life story. This has been an, uh, longer than an hour, I'm sure, and I didn't even have anyone to blab with, but I can just go on forever, so people probably need to keep me in line. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I was going to... Now, I don't know if I was breaking Google Hangouts or something. I was going to call this, um, like... I, I really need to get down the name of um, the triangle bracket, this thing. Um that you surround tags, with HTML tags with. I was going to do it like slash weekdays, so it was like end of the weekdays, um, end of the week debrief kind of thing. Um, I just decided to call it end of the weekdays, triple zero one, because we're going to have thousands of days, I'm sure. Uh, if you think I there's a better name, we should probably decide something in the first few episodes so that I don't have to change a whole bunch of crap later. But this has been fun. I don't think anyone viewed it while I was live. Uh, no one decided to join. But that was probably good just to get a general idea of how much I can blab and quote it. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, you know, if... I'm happy to do this pretty much any time of the week. Uh, after 8 p.m. is preferable. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or in summer, it will be Eastern Daylight Time. Next year, towards the end of the year, I'm going to be in Australia. Uh, I don't know if this is going to even last that long, but we'll see. And uh, these will most likely happen if I'm at home or if I'm in the office. If I'm in Vancouver and that sort of thing, that you know, then I'm going to be it's, you know, maybe after 8 p.m. Pacific time, which is 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, I started this one at 10, so I think. Uh, and yeah, uh, I, I I may these are going to be very inconsistent, I'm sure. Um, and Yeah, but what I'll do is I'll tweet when I'm doing them, and that goes to Facebook as well. Uh, and obviously, it, it gets posted to Google Plus one as soon as I start it. So if you're hanging out on the pluses, that that'll be there. Uh, yeah. So uh, and, and I don't know if there's anything you think I should blab on about, um, debrief about the week about, come and join. First of all, but if if you can't join for some reason, if you have no head. Um, then, uh, then just tweet me an idea or add a comment, something like that. This isn't, at this point, going to be a super-duper official thing. We're not going to have our own Twitter feed or anything like that, but we'll see how it evolves. Okay, cool, deal. Uh, I hope we get some cool people to join next time. Um, uh, Brian Shayla was maybe interested, and uh, Rebecca Richardson. What is her handle? Her name is so long it doesn't fit in. The Rebecca Project. 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 Is that Spanish? Um, uh, no. Goodbye. Uh, that's, that's all from me. Have a look at the links in the description um, if you're interested in any of the, the things I blabbed about. Got it all written down here so I can just paste it in. Enjoy your weekend. Who knows? I might do one of these tomorrow night. The Saturday might be insane. Um, but I need to, to de debrief about things. Um, but yeah, there's there's cool things in the office that I want to show you, but it's kind of uh, well, probably secrets right now. So another time, another office adventure I'm sure will be in.
the plans. Oh, last little treat. There is a Vidla Christmas party in December. Past the halfway mark in December. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know about how public this stuff can be, so I'll just be wary. But if you want to be my plus one for the uh, Christmas party, feel free. Um, I, I'm, I haven't even really asked my friends yet, but if you're in the, if you want to come to Bethlehem, it's like a couple of hours from New York City on a bus, like 25 bucks, including tax on a bus. Um, I have an apartment which has not much in it, but uh, you can come and stay. I gotta get an air mattress for someone else to stay on because I sleep on the floor. Because that's I like that. Uh, but yeah, you want to be my plus one? You want to stay with me for a few days? Whatever, man. If you want to stay with me a few days and not be my plus one, then whatever, man. But I guarantee it'll probably be a pretty sweet party. Talk to some really smart people and uh, have some delicious grub. I am in charge of the dessert, so yeah, that's what's up. Okay, I have spent more than enough time just being meta. Um, so you enjoy yourself. Uh, I will I will do this again. Oh, I should have done my hair like this. I, I, I'm going to leave it like this for a bit, so maybe the thumbnail can turn out like this. The end thumbnail. Yeah, okay. Uh, I uh, yes, um, group, I have I've been doing quite a few hangouts ever since they did the on-air thing where you can just record it. That's so incredibly handy, um, and you know. You can add silly things in as well. Ugh, lights. The band. I like the band lights. Hello. Hi. Coming. Okay. Um, the band, the girl, whatever. I, said, I was listening to that a little bit the other day. Uh, we got cool hats. We got rings around the top of the head. Is it this? You know, technology is pretty amazing. Um, but anyway, I don't want these to be in at the end. I want my crazy hair to look like I'm a scientist. Uh, when I don't have other people to talk to, I just let these things drag out, which is silly. I gotta train myself to stop again. I gotta be more consistent and do these things kind of more often, so I can just get on with my life. Uh, okay, goodbye. I'm gonna go to a home now. It's um, currently. I wish there were freaking widgets on the iPhone. I am really iOS seven is just way behind the times. How I get to my weather? It's currently four degrees Celsius in the beautiful Bethlehem, uh, which is actually quite warm. It's been down to two degrees recently, and it's actually a low of two to nine. Crap, at midnight it's going to start raining a bit. Oh, that's why it's kind of warmer, because it's clouds. Why is there a thunderbolt on Friday? Has it been raining? I don't know. I don't care. I, don't, I, I like to ride in the rain and stuff. It, riding in the snow, that's cool. Um, anyway, I guess I better. I, should, I, I prefer not to ride in the rain, I suppose. I wish I had an astronaut suit on. Uh, okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, my love. I like Jim Carrey. Anyway, uh, bye. This isn't meant to be a life story about me. This is meant to be just this week, and the majority of stuff I blabbed about were things I was thinking about, things I looked at this week. So I think I successfully did this correctly. <laughs> goodbye. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your eyeballs. Um, I really do. I, I I will try and respect your time more on the next one because uh, I know time is valuable and I, I don't like I don't like wasting my own time, but I don't like wasting other people's time. And uh, I you know I know you enjoy me being silly and whatever, but you could be out making a space rocket. Go and do that. Stop watching me watch myself and watch the Super Bowl. That's a shout out to Daniel and whatever those people. Michael. I don't know where the hang up. Okay, stop broadcast. Okay, goodbye.